this is the time to put my glasses back on already a roadmap of your life tag I think is it's what it's called it was created by Tristan L space books I was tagged by a couple different people I, I was tagged by Greg and never another bibliophile reads and I was tagged by uh, originally tagged by Gavin at genre books and this one is about there's only two prompts but uh, the length depends on how many places you've lived I guess <clears throat> the first prompt I'll put these in the comments of course and I'm going to try and not pause frequently like I just did and, and keep it going because it's going to be rather long I'm, I'm not I'm not going to do every address I lived at what is the book that reminds you of or takes place in each place that you've lived. This could mean country, state, province, city, town, and or apartment house. Just come up with a book that really resonates with you and the time you spent in each place where you've had a mailing address. Well, I can't do every mailing address because I've moved around a lot. I haven't really moved around that much, as people think, since I'm, uh, since I'm abroad now from being an American, not living in, a, in the United States, I'm abroad. But, you know, for the last 30 years, I lived in Seattle. So I was born in Boulder City, Nevada, which is near Las Vegas. And the first book I'm going to mention is, I believe it's number eight in the Executioner series by Mac Bolan, because it's the first book I ever read <clears throat> that was that took place in Nevada that I remember reading. It was called Vegas Vendetta. Mac Bolan is the... Uh, inspiration for a whole host of books uh, in the 60s numbered numbered paperbacks cheap paperbacks men's adventure paperbacks very violent fun books <clears throat> on a theme the theme of of the mac bowen books the executioner was that his family was killed by the mafia so i'm pretty sure this must have came come out right around the time of death wish i wonder I'll have to look into that. And he goes on, it's a, it's a war against the mafia is the theme. He's a one-man army that goes around the country killing mafioso. And he went to Vegas and won. And I remember, uh, I, I come from a time when when reading wasn't censored, when, you know, we, we always joke about Gen X having to drink from the, drinking from the hose and it's 10 o'clock, we don't know where your parents are and, you know, they let you do your own thing, which, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have grown up in that era, but uh, anyway, all, all I remember is the lesbian scene in it. That was pretty exciting and a lot of violence and it was called Vegas Vendetta and it took place in Las Vegas. So, uh, but by that time I had already lived in Northern Nevada. That's where I went to high school and everything. So living in Reno, uh, other than Vegas Vendetta, which I probably read when I was in seventh grade or something like that. I really don't remember any other books that I read that took place in Nevada. It was very rare. I'm sure I've read other books, you know, along the times that take place in, in Las Vegas. You know, there's two Las Vegases. There's the Las Vegas that the world knows. There's the Las Vegas that people grow up in. So that would be a... Uh, a good uh, venue. This is really not going to be as short as I want. I'm only on my first address. <clears throat> that would be that would be a good subject for a novel, Las Vegas as a place to grow up. I'm not going to write it. Um, then so, uh, but I will say for Reno and all that, and for Nevada in general, I will say the Oxbow Incident, which I I just read because Walter Van Tilburg Clark, Tilburg Clark is the most famous most important writer probably ever to come out of Nevada um, and, and that that book is great as I've said now I believe on three different videos so where did I move next I moved to I left school at 18 I graduated high school early I went uh, to college for a few weeks in the University of Nevada. I, I really didn't like it. And so I got on a Greyhound bus with a buddy of mine and we went to 
we ended up staying for a while in Boston, Maine. We got an apartment there. You didn't, went our separate ways and st uh, stuff. Uh, but we did travel together for a couple months. Um, what was I going to say about that? So Boston was interesting. I. The interesting thing, though, is I wanted to go to Maine, to Bangor, Maine, because it was about as far as I could imagine going on a bus. I guess I could go to Florida, which probably would have made more sense. But And I wanted to go to Maine because I was really into the MASH books, the, the book MASH, the TV series MASH. And in the book, especially, uh, Hawkeye is always talking about his life in Maine. You know, and his father was a lobster fisherman or something like that. And plus, uh, Kurt Vonnegut's books, uh, some of them took place in Maine. If, if, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Cat's Cradle took place in Maine, which I really loved. So I really wanted to go there and see it. It was so freaking cold by the time we got to Boston. I think, I, I, I think it was like October or something. So I can't go any farther north. My friend didn't care. He was kind of just along for the ride. So we found an apartment somewhere, got jobs. I lived there for a while and moved into, uh, I decided to go back east or west. I didn't, I didn't really like it that much. Um, I've never even been to the Brattle Bookshop as far as I know, which it, bit strange for someone who lived in Boston. I probably lived there like six months or something like that. I moved to the Bay Area where my family had friends and things like that. And I lived in Oakland, so that's uh, uh, Jack London territory, so I'll say the Call of the Wild. Then I moved to San Francisco to the Mission District. You know, the best San Francisco novels I ever read, The Maltese Falcon, of course, is one of the greatest American novels, in my opinion. Any any Dashiell Hammett, San Francisco stuff, you know, it's so cool to read that. And I lived there at the time, you're reading about, you know, reading a continental op story where these, these gangs, uh, you know, there's uh, some gang decides to, to rob every, if I have the details right, every... every Every bank on Market Street all at once and the Continental Up. It just happens to be around, so he works on solving it. And Maltese Falcon has an incredible atmosphere. I just read this year um, a Fritz Leiber book. His books usually are, are often San Francisco books. He lived there for many years. I saw him on the street once. I actually saw Fritz Leiber on the street. When he was an old man, I knew who he was because he lived in the Tenderloin. I think he lived on, uh, he lived close to me. I lived in the Tenderloin too, around the punk rock clubs and things like that. I think he lived on Geary or something like that. Any, anyway, there, there was a, across from him, there was kind of like a newsstand that had a lot of paperbacks. And uh, one, one day I was in there and, and Fritz Leiber was in there and, and or he just left or something and, and the guy working there said this that's you know who that is and you know and I did know who that was you know it's like um you know pretty big deal so I did see him once or twice and I mean I saw him come out of a building once and check the and I checked the this is pretty stalkery I check I went up after he, he went out of the building to wherever he was going shopping or whatever and I I looked at the the buzzers and I did see Frit F. Liber, F. Period Liber, and I was like, oh, wow. But I never went up to him or anything. I wasn't that creepy about it. I, I don't think I ever saw him again. He was very, very old at that time. He was a very tall man. Uh, anyway, I just read uh, Our Lady of Darkness by him, which, which really evokes that time in San Francisco. This would have been a few years before I moved there. Probably lived there around 80, 81. What are we up to? San Francisco. Then I moved to New York City. I don't really can't think of any books that are about New York. Hmm. Hmm. There must be something. New York must somehow relate to the world of books and writing. And I just can't think of anything. I lived on the Lower East Side. 
I mean, what can I say about New York? That's the center of American publishing, and and um, where I read a lot. I read a lot of plays at that time. I rem remember I enjoyed reading plays. I remember going through. There's a book called, and this is kind of rare for her, for Patricia Highsmith, who lived in the uh, lived in the New York area. She's from Texas. She first moved to New York. She wrote for comic books. She went on, allegedly went on a single dinner date with Mickey Spillane, I've heard. That's another idea someone can have to write a one-act play about Patricia Highsmith and Mickey Spillane on a blind date when they were both working in the comics industry. If you can imagine such a thing, if you know anything about either of those people or their, their subsequent lives or anything. Anyway, I'm not going to write that either. Uh, <clears throat> But I will mention, but and then most of her mo most famous books are really uh, set in Europe because she was in, uh, she left the United States for Europe pretty early on. But you know her early books like uh, Stranger on a Train, I think probably takes place partially in New York. Uh, the Blunderer, uh, which is her second book, but there's a book called A Dog's Ransom, which she wrote later, which she had, uh, from what I read, she actually went back to New York to re-familiarize herself with it as research. And that's a really great book. That was one of her first really great books that I read. You know, I tried to read everything by her. She's just a fantastic writer. Um, I've talked about her before on the channel. So then I moved, and then I moved back to San Francisco. I have been this kind of long distance relationship with a girl in San Francisco, so I decided to move back there. And together, and then we lived in the Haight, Haight Ashbury, which is, you know, there must be some hippie books I can think of or something. You know, that was the whole, I mean, this is later, of course, but it was already kind of getting, you could tell it was going to be pretty expensive in Shishi in a few years. We lived there one year uh, in Golden Gate Park. Uh, you know, I keep thinking of movies. When it comes to that area, I think I think of movies a lot. You know, What's Up Doc's a great San Francisco movie by Peter Bogdanovich. Uh, Thin Man always makes me think of New York too, going back to New York for a minute. Oh, and then we did move back to New York. The two We lived there like one year, but then uh, we both felt like trying New York. I And so I'd lived there a year and then we moved to New York together and we lived there about six years, I think, together. Well, three, four years together that we broke up and I lived there maybe another couple of years. So that was my longest stint in New York. And, um, and again, there's really just no books about New York. I don't know what people do there. Do they read? Do they, do they just... Um, eat pizza and I don't I don't know there's really nothing ever 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 happened in New York so there's really nothing to talk about and then we're after New York where did I go I lived in Brooklyn for a while uh, last exit to Brooklyn's a pretty uh, by Hubert Sel Selby Shelby Selby it's quite an intense book and movie. I think I read the. I think I saw the movie first. That's a pretty wild movie, and then read the book. Uh, going the other way, there's H.P. Lovecraft, the horror, uh, the horror of Out of Red Hook. I think is the story, which was, uh, which there's a great story by. There's a great novella uh, called The Battle of Black Tom by. By, I hope I get his name right, Victor Laval. Lavalli, um, which is, uh, he's a black writer, Victor Lavalas, and he did a, a great sort of reinterpretation of the horror of Red Hook, you know, kind of dealing with uh, uh, Lovecraft's, uh, you know, racism and things like that. So, and, and, and it's, but it's clearly written by someone who respects Lovecraft, Lovecraft's work. It's a really good novella, although it came out much later than after I lived in New York, but it just came to mind. Then I moved to Seattle, got stuck there like 30 years. Well, I went to school, went to, I got a, I went to, 
to, uh, what do you call it, school that's two years, community college for a couple of years there just for something to do. Because it was, it was fun living there in the beginning because compared to New York, it was like living in paradise. You know, I mean, it was, everything was so cheap compared to New York and school, which I could never afford in New York even back then, and rents, you know, everything was going crazy in New York. And then, of course, the same thing happened in Seattle. Now it's probably as expensive as New York, but so Seattle, the whole time I lived there, that was most of my life, half my life, oh, which is not fun to think about. Um, just a lot of years in Seattle, and I don't believe I ever, you know, it's funny when I lived, when I first moved there and then, and it kind of went away after a while, Seattle was kind of a cool place to go, like everything was set in Seattle. Like the show Frasier. I think that was about the time I moved there. Is Frasier was set in Seattle. I remember people on TV shows, when the, when a main character would leave the show, like George Clooney on ER, they would always move the character, would always move to Seattle. And that's what I did. I moved to Seattle. And I had, I had an idea for a book, though. So there was a book called... I can't think of it. Oh, I think it's those Nora Roberts mysteries under the name J.D. Robb. Do those take place in Seattle? They're set in the future, but you never know it. You know, I mean, through 90% of the books, you wouldn't know it. But that's the kind of thing that I seem to notice was set in Seattle. It's like people people kind of treated it, I thought, as like a, like no, it seemed like no one really lived there. They just set their books there. That's kind of an anticlimactic way to end this. Then I went to, you know, I took a, a, a couple trips abroad early on, um, you know, and I'd taken other trips, which I sk skipped, you know, many years when I lived in these places in New York. I went to Europe a couple times and went to Europe once from Seattle uh, just for a short trip. And I went to Asia a couple times uh, when I was young and a few more times when I was middle-aged because my dad lived there with his second wife in Manila and Bangkok. and. So I visited there a few times, but I didn't really live in any of those places, so I don't know why I'm bringing it up in this video. What are we doing? 17 minutes. Not bad for such a long video. Then I've been living in Albania for a little over six months, three different places, going on to a fourth place. I guess that counts as living here, even though it is a tourist visa. So I would say Ishmael Kadari, Kad Kadare, I'm not sure how you say it, is sort of the national the national novelist of of this beautiful country. He's still alive. He's, I think he's 90, you know, was often talked about for the Nobel Prize. I visited the, the town he was born in. Excellent writer. I've talked about a couple of books I've read by him before, uh, the, A Dictator Calls, A Traitor's Niche. I should read more by him, but I haven't got any more right now. So, very pleasant prolific writer, writes a lot about the, you know, various uh, parts of uh, Albanian history where they were part of the Ottoman Empire, he writes sort of satirically, writes a lot about these uh, when they're in the Soviet sphere, very knowledgeable and very thoughtful and, and humorous writer also. Next, I think the next question is, there's that's a, that's all the places I've lived. I was in I was in Finland for about three months before I came here, which is just I always wanted to go just any place any place in the Nordics, and I don't really think I've read any Finnish books, but there is a fantastic TV series uh, called uh, crime series called Soryonen. I think it's is the name. Oh, it's called Border Town in English, you know, because they take the they take these Scandinavian series that are always named after the main character, and then they give them some kind of because uh, they think Americans aren't going to be able to pronounce their name or understand. It's going to look like a funny word to them, so that then they give it a kind of generic title, like Border Town. Doesn't make it easier to find because there's another series called Border Town too. I'll link to that. It's like three seasons. Wonderful, wonderful. If you like. If you like Scandies, if you if you like Scandinavian crime horror, you know like the the border and all, all those different shows. I think it's my favorite of all those. 
anyway, and it's in Finnish, so you will not understand a word of it. But you will, but it does, of course, have subtitles. I don't know why I said all that. Okay, so, okay, since the, okay, since number two, second uh, thing, since the road, road map not only shows you where you've been, but also where you're going, what is a book that reminds you of or takes place in your next destination or a place you'd like to live? Well, I'm going to Madrid in October for two weeks, then down to the Canary Islands. And this is where I demonstrate my ignorance of Spanish literature and say, I guess, Cervantes and Lope de Vega. I don't know who else. And I'm not even sure Lope de Vega is Spanish. I mean, you know, is from Spain. He's a playwright, right? Terrible. I know I'm much better on South American authors. I want to go to... Um, Eventually, when I'm done with this part of the world, I'm definitely going to Central America, Mexico, Central America, and South America. I want to see Argentina, where all my favorite writers live, where Borges lived, and Adolfo uh, Boye Casares lived, and um, and um, Julio Cortazar. So I said Cort Cortazar. I don't know how to say it. So many, so many names. I thought I knew how to say until I had a you got a YouTube channel. Now I don't know how to pronounce any of these people's names. You know, any place in South Central America, South America, um, yeah, Colombia, Garcia Marquez, and and um, and Jorge Amado in in um, Brazil. I mean, that's kind of my other than America. America. Um, the U.S., I mean, I, I really think I like, uh, other than books in English, I think I'm most familiar with South American books. So I'm going to do a literary tour of that. If you're watching this channel in three or four years, uh, we'll talk again. Thank you. Oh, I forgot I'm supposed to, I'm going to tag uh, Alan. At Big Hard Books 770, if he hasn't been tagged yet, if he has, uh, and I'm also going to, because I know he's talked about Portland and stuff, kind of interested in, in his history, and Raynor Reed stuff lives in one of those towns that I'm sure is probably, to her, just any old, old, you know, not that exciting, but just the fact that I know somebody who lives in Nottingham, England, is just the coolest thing that my 10-year-old, 12-year-old self would have just been so thrilled by. Hope to get there one day. Hope to get to Stratford. Uh, Stratford-upon-Avon, I would like to go to. A very uh, well-known playwright was from there. I've been to London a couple times. Don't know that I'll be able to afford that again. I would like to see some other parts of England, though, that I haven't seen, like Cornwall, uh, Bath, Bath. I'd like to see very much. I'd like to go to Wales. I, I had I went to Aberdeen in Scotland once. Uh, I enjoyed that. It was like a heat wave, uh, 83 or something like that. Probably was the year, if people remember, a heat wave. It was just insanely hot. And of course, they didn't have any uh, air conditioning or, or refrigeration or anything back then. Kind of like Seattle today, uh, just the thing that only has come into, uh, uh, only has been needed starting recently. Anyway, I'm rambling, so that's it. We'll talk again.